Healthy sleep. Um, let me just say to you really quickly, the average American gets about 6.7 hours of sleep per night, the average adult. A century and a half ago, the average American adult got nine hours per night. Nine hours per night. Most of us, if we were left on our own in a sleep lab away in a cave, and this has been done actually at Stanford, we would thrive on about eight hours per night. Until we got caught up because we're so sleep deprived, we'd, we'd get about nine or ten for a while, and then we'd get caught up, and then we'd get about eight per night, and we would just be hitting on all cylinders. Our mood would improve, our cognitive function would improve, our physical performance would improve. Sleep deprivation is a huge trigger of depression. If you want to depress somebody's mood, you can start depriving them, especially of the most restorative phase of sleep. Most of us have compromised quantity and quality of sleep. We can benefit from, from both. Now, what's happened? We picked up lots of unhealthy habits. In our treatment program, we train individuals on habits of healthy sleep. We have 10 that we emphasize. I've got a few of them here. I'm not going to talk about them all. First, target eight hours per night. By the way, some of you only need seven. How would you know if you're getting enough sleep? You know how you know? Test yourself by putting yourself in a low stimulation setting. You know what happens with a room full of kindergartners, who, by the way, tend to usually get enough sleep? A room full of kindergartners, when they're in a boring assembly and they're listening to the principal drone on and on, what do they do? They squirm, they fidget. Do they yawn? No. Do they get drowsy? No. If you are in a boring situation and you find yourself yawning and getting drowsy, that's a good sign you're sleep deprived. You know what another good sign is? Go lay down an hour after lunch someday. Go lay down an hour after lunch someday in a um, dark, quiet setting. Put a little sleep mask on if you want or pull the blackout curtains. If you can fall asleep within 10 minutes, you are sleep deprived. Really. Really. If you fall asleep within minutes of your head hitting the pillow, you're definitely sleep deprived. Now, many of you should be falling asleep the second your head hits the pillow, but the problem is you've been working or you have bright light exposure within an hour of bedtime, and you know what? Even though the light in this room is not bright enough to reset your body clock, it is bright enough to tell your brain the sun hasn't gone down. When your brain sees this light, it interprets it, oh, the sun hasn't gone down yet, which means what? Don't release melatonin to give you that wave of drowsiness because you don't need it, the sun hasn't gone down. So you know what happens? I'll, let me just ask for a show of hands. How many of you have been dog tired, you know you're sleep deprived, and you finally get to the point where you lay down in bed, and you know you need sleep, and you just lay there for like 45 minutes to an hour at least before the sleep comes? For many of us, that is because either A, we've been working within an hour of bedtime, which keeps our stress response circuitry engaged, or more, uh, more likely, we have indoor lights on. So what does that mean? Within an hour of bedtime, turn off all the overhead lights. Go only for the last hour under low lamp light or candlelight, which is even more relaxing. You will be amazed at how much easier it is to fall asleep. Yes, sir. What about a TV going at the same time? Excellent question. And your wife is reading the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> is this autobiographical? Um, OK. Um, the TV, if, if it's a typical TV and you're not right on top of it, um, it's, it's probably okay. If, if you're in a completely darked out, blacked out room, TV's across the room, um, it's, it's not going to be too much light for you. Um, you know, a lamp light in addition to it that starts to kind of push the envelope a little bit. You want to... Read, read in the dark then? Exactly. Or <laughs> under like a little pen light. Or, oh, oh or, or an iPad, you know, where it's backlit. The bed is for sleep only and vice versa, not the laptop. Right, the bed is for sleep not only and vice versa. Paper. We, why is the bed only for, oh, by the way, I'll make an exception. Uh, no, not me. Sleep researchers. Sleep and sex, okay? Sleep and sex, but nothing else. Why? Why? You want to train your brain and your body to associate the bed with sleep the same way Pavlov's dog associated the bell with dinner. In other words, just like Pavlov's dog reflexively, unconsciously started slobbering and drooling, we want your body reflexively, unconsciously to go boom and go right to sleep as soon as you get in the bed. Why? Because the bed has only ever been associated with sleep and vice versa. In other words, you're not sleeping in the barca lounger, right, or the sofa in the, in the living room. You're sleeping only in bed. Yes? Are you totally screwed if you work nights? Working nights is one of the worst possible things a person can do if they're prone to depression. Okay. 
working nights is, I, I mean, it raises the rate of premature death by orders of magnitude. It raises the rate of all kinds of accidents, illness. I, I mean, I, I don't want to talk you out of it if that's, I mean, but it, it well, I, guess I the full next day, I can't. Exactly. As a clinical researcher, it is one of the worst possible things we can do to our bodies. It's to be avoided at all costs as soon as we can, I would say. Yes? Melatonin is wonderful when it's released naturally by the pineal gland in the center of the brain as a supplement. I'm not a huge fan. And, I, I, and by the way, this is a very controversial position. I have many colleagues whom I love and respect who do not agree with me on this. My own position on it is that when we take melatonin as a supplement, it weakens our own natural melatonin response. And unless we have some sort of pineal gland deficiency, tumor, cyst, something like that, we can actually probably train our pineal to release melatonin 45 minutes before our normal bedtime. The best way we can do it, by the way, you guys aren't going to want to hear this. <laughs> if you have, un oh, exercise helps, bright light helps, but here's what helps even more. If you have unhealthy sleep, go to bed at the same time every night, and even more importantly, get up at the same time every morning. Even if you had a crappy night's sleep, get up at exactly the same time, set your target, whatever it is, 6.30, 6, 7, 8, my undergraduate's 11 a.m., you know, <laughs> set the same time every day. Why? What does it do? It powerfully trains your circadian rhythm, and it gives you a profound sleep drive when you need it. It gives you that big melatonin release when you need it, 45 minutes before. Oh, by the way, one quick thing about bright light, flat screens such as are found in iPads, laptops, any flat screen gives off blue shifted light. And for reasons that are still mysterious to science, blue shifted light, even when it's dim, can fake out your photoreceptors in your retina into thinking that it's really bright. Let me say that again. If you spend time in front of a blue shifted screen, like a flat screen, an iPad, a laptop, even if you have the, the brightness on dim, it's going to trick your brain into thinking you're sitting in front of bright light, which means the sun hasn't gone down, which means you're not going to get drowsy, which means it's going to interfere with your sleep. Basically, here's it in a nutshell. You're not going to be able to fall asleep easily within 45 minutes of using your iPad or 45 minutes of using your um, laptop in most cases. Red light. Yeah, there is, a, there, there is an app now, because this has been discovered, there's an app that you can get that will cause your iPad or your laptop to shift into, into the red spectrum. That's a great point. Somebody had a question? Yeah, wait, go ahead. Some really good deep focus breathing can help. Oh, absolutely. There are all kinds of, yeah. There, I mean, there are some wonderful, wonderful ways of, of helping us get in. I mean, basically what it takes to sleep is a tired body and a quiet mind a tired body and a quiet mind.